All right, you're looking at a Kitsap Cowboy built tarp called the Boot Hill, and it was inspired after the Arrowhead Equipment Shangri-La. At the time, I wanted to invest in another tarp. I was looking at the Shangri-La uh, because I like the cuts on it and the weight savings. Unfortunately, Paul didn't have the color that I wanted, nor did he have the uh, material fabric that I wanted. So out of nowhere, Kitsap Cowboy offered to make me one on hammock forms. So it is a 11 foot tarp, spacious head end. Again, it's nine foot, 10 inches wide. Then we got the seven foot foot end. All right, now you're looking at the Kitsap Cowboy Boot Hill Tarp paired with the Simply Like Designs tarp beaks at each end. Again, instead of buying another winter tarp for one more season, I just thought, let me go ahead and get these tarp beak and close both ends of the hammock. So I'm gonna show you around and the, the features and how I use it with the Kitsap Boot Hill tarp. All right, at first glance, all you're gonna see is what looks like a pair of jeans that's just dangling over top of your tarp. You have a gross grain loop on the Simply Light Designs tarp beak. That slips over top of your tarp ridge line pull out and secures it in place hanging on the ridge line. And basically the idea here is to stake four corners out. Now I was able to um, eliminate two stakes on the doors because of the beastie rings that I happen to have on the Kitsap Cowboy Boot Hill tarp. So that saved me a weight savings of losing four extra stakes because I didn't need to use them for the door. Okay, so I'm gonna set it up and uh, show you what it looks like. All right, it's gonna be kind of difficult to see because of the uh, snake skin, but anyway, this is a reinforced end for the Simply Light Designs tarp beak, and it has a gross grain loop at the very end that ties into the beastie ring of the tarp. And basically, it just lays over top of the ridge line of the Kitsap Cowboy tarp, and it has a split down the middle. Okay, and you stake it over the corner end of the tarp. All right, here's what it looks like on the head end. I staked out the two ends, and most people would have to stake their doors out down to the middle center line of the door or crisscross their stakes, but uh, utilizing the um, the beastie D-rings on the tarp and some reflective shock cord, I was able to eliminate two stakes. All right, same goes for the uh, foot end. Put that right there. Then I just simply find the shock cord. Okay, and again, I lose those two stakes on the foot end. Stick into the beastie ring on the tarp, it's one door, and I do the same with the last door. Stake it out, so these uh, beastie rings on the Kitsap Cowboy Tarp turned out to be great. I know people use them to use for their um, porch, porch mode, but it proved to be perfect. And I just tension out the foot end. Tension the side out too. And there goes the foot end. Okay, as with most four season uh, tarps with doors. You can open all four doors to let it breeze through if it's a warmer day or just open one side. 
So here I could do the same with the Simply Light tarp beaks. Um, as with the, uh, the tile tensioners, they're just clipped in. So I just clip it onto the shock board together and I'm able to peel back uh, both the foot end and the head end doors. All right, here is it with uh, one of the doors peeled back on the head end. And same with the foot end. I'm going to demonstrate entering and exiting the tarp uh, by utilizing these Dutch quilt hooks. And uh, I'll enter, clip in, tension, exit, unclip. Alright, simply just get in like that. Then, after exiting, you want to close the door back up. You just perform the same procedure, but on the outside. Now, as you see, I got some really decent overlap on my doors as a windbreak. And what I did here is, again, you have the reinforced ends on the tarp beaks. I just added a reflective shock cord, just looped it to the gross grain loop, and then it comes out here to the beastie ring that's on the Kitsap Cowboy tarp. Now, for those familiar with um, the chameleon, actually <laughs> these were from my chameleon when I used to have it. These are these um, quilt hook tie out tensioners and I used it to clip on the beastie ring and to tension out the door on the overlap. Now once I unclip this quilt hook tensioner off the beastie ring on the tarp, I now have the ability to open the door. Okay, and you can simply walk through. And then when you're done, you just bring this back to the beastie ring on the tarp and clip it in place. Can't do it with one hand, I don't think. Let's see, there it goes. All right, let's have a look inside. Kind of standing a little bit, crouching just a, a tad. This should be able to cut the wind down and give me somewhat of a microclimate. I'm trying to, uh, I've never had a four season tarp before. I've usually ha always had asymmetric tarps and I'm not really one to like winter camping as much, but uh, maybe this will change my mind. There's the uh, head end with the door partially opened. And again, just to close the door, it's going to be weird with these gloves. Just find the beastie D ring at the end of the tarp, clip it in place. And you got some good overlap to try to uh, chill the winds out. All right, I hope this could help somebody turn their three season tarp into a four season tarp shelter. Now to find this on Simply Like Designs, you have to go to his, uh, I believe it's his Trail Haven tarp, and there's an option for tarp beaks. And if you already have an existing three season tarp, you can just ask him uh, to make the tarp beaks. They're $90 for the pair, free shipping. Uh, it's seven ounces for the pair. And uh, tonight will be the test. It's supposed to be in the low I don't know, 20s, uh, low to mid 20s tonight, so I'll be able to see if it uh, will be able to stave off the wind as well as kind of make a microclimate without using a uh, full on wind sock. So uh, let's see what happens tonight. Hey, what's up, guys? So I had a really sound sleep last night, 
to the point where I had to start taking a lot of layers off. I took my socks off, my pants, um, my balaclava, uh, quite a few items, took off my gloves, and I woke up pretty chilly when I did that, um, once my body, you know, calmed down and was at rest. Uh, now, as far as what the tarp beaks added to the system, I can't say for sure if it did much because it wasn't windy at all last night. It was um, high 20s, low 30s, very stagnant, uh, not much wind at all. So I wasn't able to see if it would be deflecting the wind, but I mean, Sil Poly and Robic XL, <laughs> XL Hammock and 220 degree quilts it is what it is it's going to get cold but uh nevertheless i'm glad that i do have those tarp beaks to close in those two ends because if it was windy it would definitely pull all that heat that i'm generating through the night out so i have another uh chip i'm going on where i'll be able to test the system maybe it'll be windy i know this place we're going to is close to a river so um, it might have the conditions to test the performance of those tarp beaks but anyway nothing like waking up in the woods and exchanging your carbon dioxide for some fresh oxygen in the trees so anyway this is short round you're watching gear and trail etc